This call is now being recorded. A prisoner at the Michigan Department of Corrections, Cooper Street Facility. And I had an experience last night. I, you know, they, they issue these makeshift masks, okay, that they are, in every facility, they're giving us these makeshift masks made out of old uniforms with two straps that go around your neck. And they're enforcing this policy of you must have your mask on at all times, but they're not real masks. Last night, I was sitting in my bed. I fell asleep, and my sheet got tangled inside of my mask, okay? And the reason why I keep the mask on is because if you get up and you go to the bathroom at night or anything, the officers scream at you, put your mask on, put your mask on. They enforce this. We've even had a deputy warden here, Deputy Warden Morgels, uh, come to our cube and tell us, you must even wear your mask inside the cube at all times. Okay, so in following with that, you know, I um, keep the mask around my neck. Well, I almost died last night. The mask and my sheet tangled within there, um, and it wrapped around my throat, and it stopped me from breathing. You know, I woke up gasping for air, trying to figure out what was going on. Am I being choked? What's going on? Um, they're not providing proper protection equipment for us. We've already lost 30-plus inmates, you know, uh, from COVID-19. Senseless deaths. They're not doing anything. We're making soap out of bars of soap that we have to beg for from the officers. When they issue us tissue, you'll have another officer come on the next shift that'll go and search your locker and say, oh, you have too many rolls of tissue. Well, you just gave me three rolls of tissue, and then the next shift will come along and search your locker and say, oh, you have four rolls in here. I'm taking a few of them. When we go up to the desk and you ask for soap, why do I have to ask for soap? It makes no sense. Now, me personally, I have an $11 account due to court orders and different things. I survive every month off of my family sending me $11. Why? Because my account, they won't allow me any more money. And although I have family support, I have people out there that's willing to send me anything that I need, I can only get $11. So... I have to budget every month. Okay, do I put $5 on my JPEG stamps to communicate with my family? And then with the remaining $6, what do I buy this time? Do I buy soap? Do I buy shampoo? Do I buy a couple of extra rolls of tissue that they sell on the store? Or do I buy toothpaste and a few other items? I have to make these choices. Do I, can I afford aspirin? Can I afford allergy pills? No. Every month, it's like 6 to $11. That's all I can spend. They won't do anything about that. And now on top of that, we have these masks that pose a danger within themselves. I literally thought I was about to die last night. The mask wrapped around my throat, cut my blood supply off, and I was choking. I sent in a medical kite. I mean, I suffer from... Uh, I have a hole in my in my lung, you know, and I've made them aware of this. It's in my medical charts, you know. The masks restrict your breathing because they're not proper. We need proper protection equipment. But I don't hear anything from our governor saying, hey, we're going to provide better PPE. We're going to assist the inmates. Every time I see the governor on national news, she's speaking about the budget, $3 billion dollars hole in the budget, but she's not saying anything about repealing truth and sentencing, releasing people from level ones that pose no harm to society. And with that being said, I, I kind of have a message that I would like to get out here, and I hope people are listening. I'm hoping that the president is listening. If you don't mind, can I say it? Absolutely. This message is to President Donald Trump and Senator Mitch McConnell. My name is Terrell Bishop. 
inmate number 619-748. I am one of 38,000 plus inmates in the Michigan Department of Corruption, or should I say corrections. I am a low management level one inmate sitting in an eight man queue waiting to die from COVID-19. So far we've lost 30 plus inmates in majority level one prisons due to Michigan's greed and corruption. Our governor, Gretchen Whitmer, has publicly stated that Michigan is facing a $3 billion hole in the state budget for the coming fiscal year. What she's not saying is that Michigan Department of Corrections takes up almost $2 billion a year, which is between one quarter and one fifth of the state's general fund. That works out to be about $35,000 a year per inmate. Now times that by 38,000 plus inmates. Now as a former law enforcement officer on local and federal level and a victim of an extremely corrupt judicial and correction system that has twice falsely incarcerated me, I understand safety and security are essential to a strong economy and a free society. But Michigan has fleeced its taxpayers and the federal government for way too long. They are attempting another heist. Why should the federal government give the state of Michigan more money to keep their well-oiled correction system going that holds over 5,000 inmates currently past their outdate for absolutely no reason, that spends $250 million annually to combine revoke probationers in prison for small violations? whose state senate and state legislators have refused to repeal an outdated truth and sentencing law that never worked and only burdens the system with inmates that pose no threat to society. Until Michigan stops lying to its general public about how they're protecting society from dangerous level one inmates who can't, who can't be safely released back into society, Michigan does not deserve federal assistance. Unless the federal government puts a clause in the use of the federal funds that states that money cannot be used for correction system or diverted to its general fund. We are in here dying. And like I said, as a former law enforcement officer, I can assure you that from my view, my opinion, 38,000 inmates can safely be reduced to about 20,000 with minimum to no harm to the general public. There is absolutely no need for a level one prison. Let me reiterate that. There is no need for a level one prison. The corrections officers in here, they're essentially professional babysitters for a majority of adult population of prisoners who are ready to safely be released back to the general population of our society. Instead, we're sitting in here waiting to die from COVID-19. And so far, 30 inmates have died, essentially all in level one prisons. We need help. Please don't let us die. Remember us. Remember the 30 inmates thus far that have died. They're real people. They're not just numbers help us. Every time I turn on the news, I hear our governor, and I respect her. She was a state senator. She was a state legislator. She was also a prosecutor. We have an honorable attorney general who's doing everything that she can to make sure everybody's safe. But speak up. Do the right thing. Why are we sitting in these level one prisons dying or waiting to die. Help us. What they're not telling people is that there are so many innocent people in the prison system due to a very, very corrupt judicial system. People don't understand how corrupt the system is. I always reiterate, they have schemes and scams to make the general public believe that we are such a threat. They have probation officers employed by the Michigan Department of Corrections that write these reports before you're sent to prison 
and it, it's supposed to tell the story of what crime you committed. But the majority of these reports are lies. If you read my report, it's all a lie. So when the general public looks into our backgrounds, they say, oh, my God, this inmate is danger, dangerous to society. That's not true. In my case, 2008, I was convicted falsely. By the time I got to prison, my transcripts were phony. My write-up from the Michigan Department of Corrections was completely phony. And when I had to see the parole board, I had to admit to a bunch of lies in order to get out of prison. How? Why? Same thing this time. Same, same system. Same prosecutor. No one's going after these prosecutors for editing transcripts, fabricating records, falsifying evidence. Everyone just assumes that the 38,000 that are in here are hardcore criminals and guilty, and we and the system needs to be protected and the society needs to be protected. That's not true. I admit there's about 20,000, of course, that need to be in here. But 38,000 inmates? No. It's not right. And every day that our government, our local government, our state legislators, our state senators, Senator Mike Shirky, uh, state legislator Lee Chatfield, they block the bills, the criminal justice reform bills. That blood of these 30-plus inmates and counting is on their hands. We do have some legislators that are trying to help us. We have uh, legislator LeGrand from Grand Rapids. He's been doing everything that he can to bring criminal justice reform. He knows the truth. But he's a single voice in a cesspool of senators and legislators. I'm not going to call them corrupt. I'm going to say they're not educated on the corruption that's on the local levels with police departments, the corruption that's allowed within the prosecutor's offices. There's so much that I can say. As a former law enforcement officer with the city of Detroit, I can tell you how our police academies teach the officers to articulate the facts when you're writing a preliminary complaint report. You know what articulate the facts mean? It means cold word lie. So when they write these preliminary reports, they're lying. They're exaggerating the elements of what occurred. So when it gets to the prosecutor's office, the prosecutor takes it and they file charges. They abuse the charging function essentially. Then once you get to the trial level, the prosecutors encourage the police officers to get on the stand and articulate, quote unquote, articulate the facts, cold word, lie. And then when they do get on the stand and they lie to get the person convicted, the transcriptionist goes in and they remove all of the lies so that... You have the, one minute remaining. So that the police officer is not caught up in perjury. These are small secrets that are not well known. We receive transcripts trying to appeal our cases and they're completely phony. We sound like killers and murderers and abusers and none of it is true because the system is very corrupt. Help us. Thank you, Darnell. Thank you for calling. All right. I'm going to try and survive in here. We all are. Appreciate you. Be, be strong and be well. Okay. Be in touch. All right, thank you.